Ford wanted you to go Trans Am racing, and they built this car to prove it. Trans Am racing was so popular in the late 60s that Ford actually developed a program where consumers could go to their Ford dealer and buy the parts to build their own Trans Am car using a lot of the same stuff that the professional factory back teams would run. And this particular car was used to develop that consumer level Trans Am parts catalog. Muscle cars all have stories and in the case of this racy looking 1970 Ford Boss 302 Mustang, the history is just as cool as the car. Back in the late 1960s, SCCA Trans Am road racing was wildly popular because it was highly competitive, it was fun to watch, a lot of the cars had factory backing, and they still resembled the muscle cars that you could buy at your local car dealer. In fact, Trans Am rules stated that car makers were required to sell street versions of their race cars in order to be competition legal. This 1970 Boss 302 started life as one of those cars, a regular production Boss destined to be a street-driven car. But as the popularity of Trans Am grew, many people would approach their Ford dealers asking how to turn their street Mustangs into road racers of their own. And as you can imagine, the dealers didn't have much to offer so Ford commissioned a company called Carcraft to help. Now Carcraft was already subcontracted to build the super bad Boss 429 Mustangs and they did some design work on the Boss 302 so they knew a thing or two about performance Mustangs and the goal was to turn this street Boss into a racer and create a step-by-step -step performance manual for consumers to follow so they could build their own cars into road race heroes. Two manuals were done, the Boss 302 chassis modification and the Boss 302 engine modification for strip and track books, which were then sold through the Ford dealers. The manuals contained detailed modifications that owners could perform to modify the engine, suspension, brakes, chassis, roll cage, body, and much more as they built their own cars into various stages of racing machines. The books were also loaded with specific part numbers of the stuff used so enthusiasts could buy the parts from their dealer to perform many of the modifications. And just like the actual Trans Am cars, many of the parts were sourced from other Ford products like oversized 1969 Lincoln four piston brake calipers and rotors. The book explains how to move the stock Mustang front disc brakes to the rear of the car and add the larger Lincoln brakes up front for better stopping power along with all the part numbers required. The car we see here today is the very same car used in the creation of those manuals. After Ford was done using this car to develop the performance parts over-the-counter racing program, uh, it was sold and then it went racing. There's all kinds of stickers in the windshield about different events that this thing competed in over the years. And now it's ready to go vintage racing. Who's with me? The next stage of this car's life is just as interesting as the first. Once the manuals were complete, this car was sold to a team of car craft engineers and they raced the car, calling themselves the Moonlighters, uh, hence the decal on the quarters. The car sold again to Martin Baran, who was the owner of Lola Cars International in England. Baran shipped the car to England and raced it in Group 2 events for several years, making performance upgrades along the way. The car was raced all through its life and has been evolving to stay safe, current, and competitive. Today the car is powered by an angry 500 plus horsepower 302 assembled at Holman Automotive and it spins a top loader 4 speed transmission. The vintage aluminum intake is fed by a Holley carburetor and side exiting open exhaust really only seems to amplify the racing cam, high compression, 
and the high flow heads. The rear end is a floating 9 inch and it's hung by leaf springs and the four wheel disc brakes peek out through the mini light front wheels and the American racing rears. Gumball tires hold the road and the suspension has been modified with revised geometry as outlined in the chassis book. Today, the car has updated Global West front suspension pieces, but it retains power steering. Inside, the car is a gutted race car with aftermarket gauges and the stock dash, a Kirky racing seat, five-point harness, and a roll cage that is still reminiscent of the old Trans Am days. No luxury items are found in this car, and definitely no sound editing. The outside is all race car as well, with sheet aluminum headlight blanks, oversized lower air dam with functional brake cooling ducts, glass retaining tabs, event stickers in the windshield, flared fenders, logo stickers up the sides, flared quarter openings, a rear wing, a smooth rear pan, and a fuel cell. It retains the vintage look, but it's ready to rock, and it sits among some other very cool Mustangs here in the Brothers Collection. Or should we say, Brothers Collection Race? We think it's pretty cool that Ford developed a Trans Am home game and that the car they used to develop that program is still around today. Who knows, maybe someday you'll see this car back on track. Thanks for watching this episode of Muscle Car of the Week. If you like this kind of stuff, share your thoughts on our Facebook page or YouTube comments, and we'll see you next time from the Brothers Collection. Um, I kind of dig that. <laughs>